If you're a Christian and you've stumbled upon the term documentary hypothesis, let me help you out. The documentary hypothesis, also known as the JEDP theory, presents some challenges to the Christian faith, but it can be confusing. Scholarship from all sides is a bit of a mess right now, and you may even wonder how much it even matters for the truthfulness of Christianity. A lot of stuff is out there that goes really deep. I'm going to keep this brief and simple so that you know what you need to know. Christians and Jews have traditionally believed that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, aka the Torah, aka the Pentateuch. But then around the 19th century, a new view was established that the Torah was not written by Moses, but instead by four primary sources known as J, E, D, and P. These sources were written at different times long after the time of Moses, and their writings were eventually brought together, giving us the Torah. The whole reason for this shift away from Moses was not because we discovered four sources. We don't have those sources at all. We just have the Torah. But reading the Torah, we find a lot of different styles of writing. Sometimes the same story is told more than once. Sometimes you have apparent contradictions. Different names are used for God, and some details imply things that only existed after the time of Moses. These observations led many scholars to believe that the whole Torah must have been written by multiple people after Moses rather than by Moses himself. Since its invention, the documentary hypothesis has been challenged, modified, restated, reworked, thrown into a blender, and transmogrified by scholars to the point where there are about as many half-baked views as there are people trying to figure it out. This shouldn't surprise us, given how we're just speculating how something seems to be the case because of oddities in the Torah that don't feel right. So, Anyone who thinks that the documentary hypothesis is this strong, unified assault by liberal scholars against the authorship of Moses is just repeating information that died out a long time ago. Even proponents admit that they're on the defensive and their view is dying out. Nonetheless, the majority view of scholarship is still that the Torah has multiple authors, probably long after Moses. They only disagree on how many authors, when these authors wrote, and how to slice up the Torah among them. The JEDP sources may or may not be considered a good starting point. Okay, does this matter for the believing Christian? Yes, it does. The Bible credits Moses for the Torah. If Moses is not the name we should give to the Torah, it wouldn't make Christianity no longer true, but it would be a blow against an important doctrine that the Bible can be trusted in everything it teaches. We see the Torah itself speaks of Moses writing down God's law. That Moses is behind the Torah is reaffirmed in Joshua, Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Malachi, elsewhere, also Jesus, Paul, Peter, James. That matters. But just as there are many different scholars still trying to figure out all the different sources for the Torah, there are also many scholars questioning if we ever should have hopped on that rabbit trail that began with the documentary hypothesis. Today, many scholars are paying more attention to the Torah as a single literary unit. In other words, they are seeing the first five books of the Bible as a unified story rather than a jumble of different writings smashed together. In doing so, we are learning a lot of cool new things, and we are starting to realize that all the different styles of writing, duplicated stories, and so forth, can be better explained by Jewish writing habits and different issues being addressed rather than different authors. In fact, the late David Kleins, who served as the president of the Society for the Old Testament Study and president of the Study of Biblical Literature, published an academic article where he took the same thinking used for the documentary hypothesis and applied it to Winnie the Pooh. He looked at the literature of Winnie the Pooh and used the same kind of analysis to argue that Winnie the Pooh was not actually written by Alan Milne. This, of course, is satire, but it goes to show that the methods used to give us the documentary hypothesis are not realistic. You can read Klein's article, New Direction in Pooh Studies, for free online. Apart from Christian concerns, one of my biggest hesitations about denying Moses is the subtle arrogance it implies. That Moses authored the Torah 
is affirmed all across the ancient writers. We already saw this in the Jewish writings of the Old Testament, Christian writings in the New Testament. It's affirmed by early church Christians, Jews, all the way to the 1900s. It takes a lot to stand against the weight of all that history, especially if the best we have to say is that the Torah doesn't seem like it was written by a single person. Maybe the reason it's weird to us is because we live in a different culture and place and language thousands of years later. If the Torah, the centerpiece of Jewish life and religion, really was a compilation of different sources brought together long after the time of Moses, why isn't there a whiff of historical knowledge of this? How did an entire Jewish nation so quickly become confused about where their own sacred book came from? And consider this. The documentary hypothesis and all its variations only works if the person editing all those sources together was careless, indifferent, or believed it would be okay to have duplicated stories, inconsistencies, and so forth. So the blame for why the Torah is written the way it is is placed on the late editor. Why not just place that blame on Moses? I'm not saying that Moses was a bad author, but I'm saying that the solution proposed by the documentary hypothesis doesn't fix the problem. It just relocates it to a different person putting this thing together later in time. Now, there's still problems with the traditional view. The biggest problem for Moses, in my mind, is that the Torah includes details that should not have existed when Moses was alive. The most obvious example would be Deuteronomy 34, which tells us about the death of Moses. But here's where we need to understand. To attribute Moses with the Torah doesn't have to mean that Moses personally hand wrote every part of the Torah. It means he's the name behind it all. A lot of other people were probably involved and that's fine. Numbers 21:14 has an example of where Moses quoted from the book of wars. I would imagine he was using other writings in his archive that talked about Adam and Eve, Abraham and others before his time. People weren't so concerned about plagiarism or intellectual property right back then. Other people may have recorded sermons and teachings of Moses while he was around and added that into the Torah after Moses died. They could have updated information, right? Like when a city changed its name, they changed it in the Torah so people would understand. And by God's providence, the Torah was eventually shaped into its final form not too long after the time of Moses. None of this would remove the name Moses from the Torah. And given how diverse and fragmented the documentary hypothesis has become, it seems there's plenty of legroom to see how Moses could still fit into the picture. Even if Moses was completely uninvolved in the creation of the Torah, evangelical Christianity would adjust. We'd probably have to say that the Bible rightly attributes these books to Moses because they're about Moses and their authority comes from what Moses did. I think there's problems with that, but it wouldn't end Christianity, and I don't think we need to go there in the first place. As Josh and Sean wrote in Evidence That Demands a Verdict, the model that remains a simplest explanation for the Pentateuch's composition is the traditional Jewish and Christian model. Moses as the original author, used some sources and later editors updated the text to ensure it was understandable to contemporary readers. I don't claim to have solved everything, especially in a video this short, but hopefully that gives you enough to see that Christians really don't need to freak out here. If you're curious about the authors for other books of the Bible, I've done a few other videos. I'll post those in the comments below. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.